So the first thing we want to look at, as I said, is, whoops, sorry about that, is we're going to look at structure of groove pages. So what you need to know is there are three basic main things you need to remember when you're building a funnel or building a page with groove pages, and that is blocks, containers, and elements. Those three, uh, understanding how those three interact with each other is going to be critical for being, you know, for reducing the level of frustration when building with Groove. And so what I have is a little demo uh, site, and I'm going to put a link up here. You can, you can download this site if you want to. You can put it in your own account, and then you can, you know, kind of play around with it and see specifically what I'm showing you in your own account. Uh, what we have here is a black, the black area here is a block. And so number one, you cannot put anything on your page without a block. You have to start with a block. And so the black area is a block. Inside the block, every block has to have at least one container. And so the blue area inside this black area is a container that's inside the block. So a block is first. Containers or layouts go onto blocks. And then inside of the containers is where we put the elements. So before you can add text, images, any kind of uh, 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 element to your screen, you have to have a container that's inside a block. And that's what we have right here. So this is a real basic block. I'll just show you real quickly how we add that. Uh, when you're on the page, if you don't have anything on, you're going to see this plus here. If you're on the page already, uh, you might notice that I clicked right up here in the upper left-hand corner of this black area, which means I selected the block. And when we have a block selected, we can add a block above or below. So in this case, I would click plus, and then you get all of these options you can use. I'm going to show you just empty blocks, and I'm going to click on the empty container. And what you'll see is I've added a block at the top. I'm going to put some spacing in it so we can see it a little bit more like what we see below. So this would be the black area would be the white would be black below. And then this empty container is where this blue is. So that's how we add a block. And by the way, if you want to know how to delete a block, it's very simple. There's a little black bar that shows up when you have something selected. We just click the trash can and confirm and we can get rid of that. So block is the first thing. Containers is the next thing. So I'm going to go down to another example and show you um, the same thing. We have the black block. Inside the black block is this blue container. And what I did is put a container inside that container. So as I said, every block has got to have one container. And I call that the main container or the home container of the block. And it's important because it's not very often that I'll put elements right in that home container. And the reason for that is you cannot duplicate and move a home container to another block. Um, now, we kind of have a solution to this now where you can actually save it and use it again. But what I tip, typically end up doing is put a, putting a container inside the container. And what you're seeing here is the black is the block, the blue is the main container, and then inside of that container, I added another container. So really important to, to understand, blocks can hold as many containers as you want, but a block does not contain a block. A block is the most basic. It ha it's the, you can't put anything else in a block except for containers. Uh, but with containers, the second piece of this, you can nest containers in containers in containers. And that's really important for beginning to put things across the page or putting special features inside a block like text and then an image below that and things like that. So this right here is a container, a one column simple container. It's also called a layout. I'll show you up here on the left. Right at the top, we have a col one, two, three, four, five columns, we have a container. So this is the area where we start to pull containers from. And in most cases, I don't tend to use the layout. I tend to use the container. If I just want a simple layout, if I want to do two, three, or four, and I'm going to show you that, I'll use these two, three, four, or five containers here. So this is a black block with a blue container holding this white container. So let's go on to another example. So we're now expanding it. So here we have a black block. We have this blue container. Inside that is the white one we just added up here. And so what we did in this simple container is I added an image inside this container. So we have an image 
inside the white container, which is inside the blue container, which is on the block. So we're just nesting containers and elements inside of containers. Now, what if we wanna put things side by side on the page? So the, the simplest and most effective way for especially beginners, even most of the time, this is what I use, is to use what's called two column or three column layouts. And we saw those over here when we see one, two, three, four, five column layouts. And what, what I've done here is we have the black block, we have the blue container, everything's the same. We have the white container. And, but what I did inside of it is I added a two column container so that I could put images side by side. So when you wanna put things across the page and, and have them side by side, you need to start using columns. And so this right here is a two column layout and it has an image on the left and an image on the right. And that's how we begin to sort of build things more than just straight down the page. Let's go to another example. And I wanna show you what I, specifically what I was talking about earlier when I said you can nest containers inside of containers. So we have the same thing that we had above. You see this. And down here, we have the two column layout. Remember, this is the same thing. This I just took this two column layout, but what I did on this one is I added a three column layout inside of this container in the two column layout. So if you look at these arrows and go up right here, you see this red outline, that is a three column layout. So what I did is I went over here and put a three column layout inside and I'm gonna try that. You can, by the way, I'm colorblind and sometimes it's very hard for me to see what other people can see fine, but you can kind of see the little, I can barely see the little pink line that's below the three arrows right there. But that's where I'm gonna drop this right now. And when I let go of it, you'll see that it put, a, it put three columns in a row there. And literally you can nest inside, you can take a five column and put it inside. I don't know why you would do this, but you that has five columns inside of that one column of the three columns of the two columns. You're getting the picture. I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna get rid of the other one as well. So this is how we nest containers. This is how we start to build a little bit more complicated structure uh, is by using the columns inside of containers, inside of containers, inside of blocks.